Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. The first story. Manager requires me to put everything in writing, so I wrote down my every action. The second story. Host complains that I look at a report on her iPad. It won't print well, so management makes her handwrite it every day. The third story. Guy tried to leverage a formal complaint claiming about having to work too hard on an important task. My old boss gave this guy's boss advice. The first story is, if it's not in writing, it didn't happen goes both ways. My new manager at work is one of those people that absolutely has to be in control. Even when you're exceeding every scorecard measure, keeping your head down, not putting a toe out of line, she still asks you to come to a meeting room to discuss some minor issue or another. Recently, she pulled me into a meeting to discuss me being late from work. Protocol is to call in, say we'll be late, then submit a schedule adjustment request when we arrived. She accused me of not calling in or submitting a request, but was able to prove I did. Only instead of leaving it at that, she insisted I now needed to call her and explain why I was late. That's not the process, I told her, and she said she was making a new one. So now I call her at 6am on her day off to let her know if I'm going to be late. She also had a meeting with me because my scorecard for a stat was 99 out of 100, with a target of 50. She had to point out the 1 out of 100 I missed. She also did the same for a handling time issue, where I'm hitting an average of 600 seconds with a target of 1500. She needed to tell me about a call I took too long on. Suffice to say, complaints have been raised to her manager. Following an incident where she was asked to follow up on something for me, and claimed if it's not in writing it didn't happen, I've been asking for everything in writing, and repeat that mantra back to her when she claims to have told me something. Last week she asked me to see her after my call. I walked over and she wasn't there, so went back to my desk. She asked me why I didn't stay around, and I reminded her of the time she put in writing that I wasn't to spend more than one minute waiting for her if she asked to see me and was to go back to my desk to take calls, not wasting time. She asked me to come over again, and when I did she wasn't there. This repeated twice more before my shift was over. Each time I documented logged out at 14 14 35 pm, came to your desk, you were not there, spent 45 seconds waiting, returned to desk, and took another call at 14 16 38 pm in chat. She messages me to ask what time I finish. I tell her it was 2 minutes prior, and she says we can catch up now. I tell her that my shift is over, and ask if she'll approve an overtime pay for an out of hours meeting. She tells me not to be silly, and it'll just take 10 minutes. I refuse, and say if I don't get paid we can do it tomorrow when I am being paid. She's typing, then not, then typing, then not, choosing her words. I know she's angry at being challenged, and she decided to employ one of the tactics she used when she managed a team for a company where this was standard practice. Okay, well, if you'd like to go home now, I can always make it a formal meeting. A formal meeting where I work is code for a meeting with HR, documented on your record, for misconduct and repeated issues. She thinks she's won. Not a problem, make a formal meeting, ensure I have 24 hours notice, send a formal invite, and I'll bring a support person with me. I log out and leave, but not before grabbing screenshots and saving a copy of the chat logs. Next day she's called my bluff and has a meeting scheduled. I send it to my union rep and she comes in on the day. HR sits down with us and opens with, so we're here today to discuss some concerns. Your team leader asked you to attend an off-the-cuff catch-up three times, and for some reason you refused? I quickly clarify what actually happened. My manager claims otherwise, and I repeat her mantra, if it's not in writing it didn't happen. Then I supply receipts, her demands to put things in writing, her chat, my timestamps, my call logs, and her message to me afterwards. My union rep stares at the two of them with a small smile and asks, So, do you maintain that position that employees should attend meetings unpaid, and that misconduct investigations are a good use of resources if they refuse? HR said there may have been a miscommunication, and that I could return to work. I have it put in writing that I'm not accused of any misconduct, and have been cleared of any false accusations, with nothing documented on my staff file. Yesterday my team was advised that our team leader had decided to pursue opportunities outside of the company and we were getting a new manager. Edit. Small comment to those that say it's an SH place to work. Full disclosure, it's actually not. Job is satisfying on a personal and ethical level. I deal with vulnerable people and help them. Pay and perks are great, and the people are great to work with, 
The metrics are more than reasonable, and all my managers over the last several years have been wonderful except a couple, who were wrong for the world, and were swiftly removed or made to improve. The second story is, don't touch the iPad, you got it. Until recently, I worked at a fine dining restaurant. I was there for three and a half years, and the majority of that time I was a busser. By the time I left, I was the most tenured person in the front of house by a fair margin, including managers, which we burned through ridiculously quickly. And everyone I directly worked with had good things to say about my work ethic and how I was with my guests. I could be abrasive as a person, but if I was in your section, you'd have a smooth night professionally. Some background. Our restaurant was 90% reservation. One wasn't required, but if you wanted a table at a certain time, you made one. On occasion, we'd have walk-ins or someone wouldn't show up to their reservation, but the number of covers, people you walked into, was usually pretty spot on to what you'd end up doing. Most of them were for two, but we'd also take larger tables. If the night was all two tops, we wouldn't set up for anything, and anything bigger than a four top, we'd have to push tables together. Not an issue, but a little time consuming to make sure every server was cool with the placement. Setup took between two and three hours, depending on how busy we were. Lastly, you'd figure out how busy we were from an iPad the host used, or that's how I did it. One winter, we had a shakeup. We had a new manager from our corporate parent take an open spot for a short-term contract. We'll call him Dave, and he quickly became one of my favorite managers. He was pretty no-nonsense and respected that he didn't know how our restaurant ran. Thus, he was open to talking through our reasoning and basically expected that we were good at what we did unless we proved otherwise. Our hosts were mostly young women or old girls, like still in and just out of high school. In several instances, it was a first job ever because the compensation was and still is pretty crappy. You'd get what you'd pay for, and many of them didn't have the refinement one would expect when paying over $100 a head before tax, tip, and alcohol. One, who we'll call K, was pretty protective of the iPad, at least when it came to me. When I came in, I would breeze up to the host stand, look at the numbers for a minute, then go set up. She apparently brought up that I would do this for no reason to Dave and to his boss, who told Dave to get me to knock it off so HR wouldn't have to mediate. That would have looked bad for basically everyone. She never got upset when anyone else looked at the spread of tables, but I digress. He asked why I was touching the iPad. I responded that I was looking at the numbers, the big tops, special requests for tables, stuff like that. He asked why I wouldn't wait until pre-shift for that. I told him that was 15 minutes before service. I might be able to change things in time if that happened, but I'd miss the rest of pre-shift. And if I had to put together tables, the restaurant would be at least partially not set. He asked specifically what I needed, and I told him a breakdown of the tables by time is what I looked at. He said he'd make sure I had one when I came in, and told me not to touch the iPad again. Cool, works for me. The next day I come in and it's waiting for me, handwritten because the app we use doesn't play well with printers. The day after I asked him for it and he said he had forgotten, he'd get it to me. Took him half an hour to write it out and double check that he didn't miss anything. The malicious compliance here is twofold. At some point between day two and three, Dave realized that he has other stuff to do, rather than write out the spread of tables every day. He's been asked to not let me touch the iPad and I've told him I won't. So he talks to Kay and tells her she needs to write it out, and it needs to be done by the time I get in, about half an hour after she does. She, like Dave, realizes it's a lot of work for something I'll look at for 30 seconds, and asks him to let me look at the iPad again. Sorry, no can do. We've gotten complaints, and we don't want HR to get involved. Kay comes to me and offers me the iPad when I get in. Sorry, I've been given a direct order. I'll take the spread when you're done writing it up, though. I'd planned on relenting after a week, but the servers ended up loving seeing what was coming in when, and it became a staple of the host job from then on. Kay ended up quitting after getting into it with another manager, but her contribution of a handwritten spread by the host is still going strong as far as I know. The last story is... Think you'll build an empire? This story concerns my former boss. Call him Boss, who is the best boss I've ever had. The guy always looked after us, dealt with a lot of BS, but his real skill was in dealing with very senior execs and corporate bureaucracy. He was and is a master of business judo. Anytime some exec would try and throw their weight around, he would use their momentum against them to get his way. This was my favorite example. At the time, I worked for a very large multinational company, and my boss was a director. One day we were chatting when boss got a call from a colleague, call her other boss, who ran a similar team within the company, but in a different organization. My team had developed a product and other boss's team inherited it 
and we were in charge of keeping it going. Other bosses' team was good, and we liked working with them, except for one guy, Entitled Dude, who had been given the control of the product, Awesome Project. He had worked for a separate manager for years, but his manager had left to go to a competing company, so Entitled Dude ended up with other boss. He was trouble from moment one, as he clearly thought he should be running her team. She was an executive director, he was a senior manager with no direct reports, and he even told other boss that to her face. He was insecure, backstabbing, ambitious, and wanted a team to manage, to do his work. He had got an awesome project because he had the most availability, and his seniority entitled him to it. Other boss couldn't give it to anyone else or take it from him, even though she wanted to. Other boss was complaining to boss that Entitled Dude had notified her formally that his current work situation was untenable. He had said that running the project on his own was forcing him to work 7 days a week, 12 plus hours a day. He was barely spending time with his family, and he needed a headcount to make this run. He claimed he needed 5 full-time employees reporting to him to make this happen. Now, other boss only had 4 direct reports at this time for reference, and boss had 5. It was also total BS that he needed a team. The product basically was self-contained, and he had to fire off a single Python script. The problem was that at the company we were at, this sort of claim was taken very seriously, and many people used such claims of being overworked and creating a hostile environment to build their own personal empires, and clearly this was Entitled Dude's intent. Worse, other boss called to complain to boss because she felt like her hands were tied, even though Entitled Dude was obviously lying. She had to give him staff, or she would be in trouble from the company. She hoped boss could give her some technique to maybe only give him one headcount. This is when boss's genius went on full display. He smiled and said, you don't have to give him anything, he'll take it all back and be happy. After telling other boss what to say, we hung up and heard what happened. Other boss called in Entitled Dude, who looked very smug like he knew he was about to get his way, having outsmarted everyone. Other boss, Entitled Dude, thank you so much for coming in and for taking the time to tell me how awful your situation is. Entitled Dude, yes, thank you, I hope we can fix this, because this cannot go on and I would hate to have to escalate this further. Other boss, absolutely, it made me feel horrible to know you've been working this long and under so much strain. I only wish you had brought this to me sooner, so that we could have taken care of this before. We're gonna take care of all of this today. Entitled dude, apparently massive, obnoxious smile. So you've approved my five direct reports? I believe that means I'll need a title change to director. Other boss, oh no, no, we can't do that. No, I'm sorry for the confusion. What I meant is that effective today, you're no longer running the awesome project. Instead, you'll take on a small project, which had no external visibility and was a task nobody wanted, which requires much less time, and I'll give awesome employee the awesome project. Now you can have a much healthier work-life balance and relax, and I'm counting on you letting me know if this project takes too much time also, as I can always give you garbage project instead, which is even easier and worse. Please let me know, because you shouldn't have to suffer like this. Apparently Entitled Dude was stunned. He clearly hadn't thought of this outcome. He tried to backtrack immediately, but OB heard none of it. She relegated him to this minor project, and there was nothing he could do about it. Entitled Dude left the company two months later. Boss was a boss. When they had a reorganization and took me off of his team, work became lousy and I moved on. I was able to realize all the things he had quietly done for us. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications.